we'll get started. So this is the first question I'll cover. Um, so let me, without further ado, let me get started. It says a uh, flywheel of given some rotational inertia. That's great. Uh, we have a numerical value, so I'll just use this symbol here. And uh, by the way, I'm not going to be plugging in any numbers. Hopefully, I do this correctly and, you know. <laughs> but I'm not going to be plugging in any numbers in the interest of time. Um, so starting from rest, acquires an angular velocity of 190 radians per second. Let me give it a symbol. For angular velocity, we use a symbol omega. Sometimes we call it angular frequency, and it really relates to this quantity, the frequency through this relationship, 2 pi times frequency. Sometimes that's uh, uh, important to useful. Uh, while subjected to a constant torque from a motor for um, for five seconds. So I guess it's some kind of duration of time that we're gonna need. All right, um, it asks for what is the angular acceleration of the flywheel? Oh, so the reason I wanted to go over this question is really to um, remind you of things that you have learned that um, as we start to talk about rigid body, rigid body rotation, that um, surprising amount of this is uh, rehash or review of what you have already learned. So you have learned Newton's second law, which was a good portion of our class, uh, kind of trying to work out the dynamics. And Newton's second law says it relates acceleration to net force, which causes acceleration. It says net, uh, acceleration is net force divided by mass, or what you might call inertia. And all of that is still continuing to be applicable. Angular acceleration is caused by torque. So it's related to net torque. And the numerical factor that relates net torque to, net torque to angular acceleration is rotational inertia. So divided by rotational inertia. And, um, and uh, oh, uh, torque is part B. So, um, so for part A, I think we need to use kinematics. So this is what you learned when we covered the kinematics before <laughs> Newton's second law, is how acceleration relates to other quantities so you can measure. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. And velocity is given by rate of change of position. So those are the basic kinematics starting point. And by the way, um, if you want to be more accurate calculus wise, you say acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. I think I, I'm writing this, this average acceleration expression because for this um, question where you're dealing with a constant torque, um, average will be the same as instantaneous. So those are the kinematics relationship that you had for linear motion. For angular motion, that same paradigm still applies. The angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity. And angular velocity is rate of change of angular position. So, um, so a lot of the intuition and approaches you had for linear motion, linear dynamics, they still continue to be applicable. So here it's uh, asking for the angular acceleration here. Um, so I, I guess let me write that down, angular acceleration is, um, oh yeah, we are given the quantities relating to rotational kinematics. So let me write down that's the rate of change of angular velocity. It looks like we have the final angular velocity and it's moving from rest. So the rate of change will be that final minus zero. And we are given the duration of time divided by delta t. Um, that should give you the numerical value and you know check out the units radians per second divided by second should give you radians per second squared so work out the numbers in radians per second squared 
that's your answer. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that's your uh, answer to part A. Now for part B, it's asking for what is the magnitude of the torque. And um, this is where you remember Newton's second law. You have this relationship here, and it looks like uh, I was given everything that we needed. Um, so let me solve this for net torque. And here, um, read the question carefully. When I say net torque, but the only um, kind of source of torque is this torque from a motor. So that is your net torque. And that net torque is equal to uh, rotational inertia times angular acceleration. You have the value of rotational inertia given. You have a value of angular acceleration from what you worked out here. So that should give you an answer. Now, there's a bit of a um, um, kind of semi-interesting well, matter of units. So if you plug in the units, this is what you will get. Kilogram times meter squared um, and acceleration times radians per second squared. And uh, this is an excellent place to remember that radian is not a real unit. It's basically equal to one. But uh, we write it down when we want to make it clear that the quantities that we are dealing with are uh, angular quantities. But in terms of dimensional analysis, it's not a real unit. You can ignore it whenever it's convenient. So you have unit of kilogram, meter squared per second squared. And when you work on Newton times meter, you will get the same quantity. And what I want you to kind of point out and uh, make sure that you are aware of, um, because we talked about energy, you might be thinking, oh, Newton times meter, isn't that equal to joule? And I want you to say that in the context of torque, no, Newton times meter is not joule, because a joule is a unit of energy. And the thing that distinguishes torque from energy is that torque is a vector quantity. It's a physically distinct quantity. And to reinforce that, we never use a joule for any unit of any quantity other than energy. Unit of torque, there's no special name for it. It's just Newton times meter. So plug in the numbers, work it out. That should be correct.